above ringside here at Rayleigh Field. It's the Stockton Heat taking on the Bakersfield Condors outdoors where the game belongs. I think everybody was running high on adrenaline for sure. I was, it was pretty cool just to be playing outside, so everybody was pretty pumped up and fired up. It was a cool experience and it was fun to, uh, to be part of that. And uh, Of course, I've grown up watching uh, the Winter Classic and stuff like that, so it felt like a pretty similar feeling. It was cool uh, to be a part of it. It was definitely a relief to have that final that puck drop happen. Um, I actually, I actually thought it was awesome to see a guy like Terry Harper get to go and drop that first puck. I've known him for for 10, 15 years of my life playing out in the skate town in Roseville. The guy's got five rings, and for him to be for him to be honored like that, for him to come out in his Canadiens jersey, that was that was awesome. And I, I loved watching from the press box. I snapped a picture for from my phone just for my own sake, and I know there's a a couple of good ones of it uh, from our our guys, but uh, but no, and then the real puck drop happened, and that was it was something where it was like okay, you know, it felt like a normal game. You know, it hasn't leading up to it, it hadn't felt like a normal game day at all, and all of our preparation was a little bit different. And I kind of you know we were tired, and it was long days and long nights, and and we were uh, it just felt a little off. But once that puck drop hit, it felt like another game day, and. You know, from there on out, it was it was just um, business as usual for us. First to get there will be Van Brabant. A bit of fog, and on the uh, glass, here's a shot that makes it through traffic. Obviously, le less than ideal. The, the fog was was tough. It was tough for the fans. It was tough for for me as a broadcaster, and it was tough for the coaches. Uh, which is funny thing because they are the ones that are on the ice. They didn't have to look through much of it, but even they said that they had some troubles. Well, I guess it just kind of added the whole outdoor experience, um, the elements and. The fog, is it was just a big part of it. Um, obviously, the game was played a little early the next night, so we had a bit of the, the sunset, uh, so there was a little glare off the ice that we had to deal with. and um, So that, was, that just kind of all added to the experience. Obviously, you know, for the fans, it would have been better if they could see or have a better vantage point, but from the players' side of things, it was, it was all part of the experience. Actually, when we were walking out for one of the periods, that was the first time I really noticed it, and you could literally not see into the rink, but um, in terms of affecting us, I don't think it really affected us. It was fine. We didn't even really notice it. I don't think uh, once we got playing the game, you kind of just block those things out. It's it's unfortunate for the fans mostly, especially uh, the fans that came out and braved the uh, the wet weather on uh, on Friday night. That's sir, he'll knock this one in behind the net. It goes. Ordeo tried slowing that one down. It goes off of his stick. Centering pass, looking for it. Where is it? It's in the net. Just tried to stick with our system. You know that's going to happen. You're going to fall down in games, but um, we knew if we just stuck with our system and continued to play. Uh, play hard that we could uh, get that goal back. First off, I had no idea how the goal went in. I, I actually thought it went off of Yoni Ordeo and in. I was later told by Coach Huska that it went off of Pat Seeloff's skates and through the goaltender. So uh, I, I didn't know how the goal went in. I felt bad for Orts because, you know, being a goalie, that's a tough one to have happen, um, especially for the defenseman that it goes off of. I think it was Seeloff. Um, that's, you know, that's a tough play for him because he's just doing his job in front. Now it comes back for the Condors, but it doesn't set well. And a big hit by Turner Elson. Elson's hit was uh, a big, I think, a big help to try and get the momentum. And, um, you know, Elsie always brings uh, momentum, you know, whether it's a big hit or just working hard, he always seems to be doing that. Well, it was kind of delayed from the fans because the glass was kind of fogged up. So anytime anything really happened on the ice, it was a little delayed. but. From the uh, from the bench perspective, we were all uh, you know excited for for the entire thing. So any big hits or uh, any time a goal was scored, it was, it was a lot of excitement. Oh, I thought it was huge. I thought it was the biggest reason that we came out flying in the second. I didn't think we had that bad of a first in the first place. But uh, you know, Elson Elson's one of those guys that's going to make those plays time and time again. It's a momentum shift. Um, anything like that is always gets uh, gets the guys going. And I thought it was. Uh, Really important, and it's a good momentum uh, shift in our direction. Poirier trying to skate away from one. He hits the post on the shot with Grant all around him. A backdoor shot. They score! The Stockton Heat! They get one on the backdoor. The rebound was there, and the Heat will gain their first goal in the outdoors. Grant's a guy that, I mean, come on, we've, we've seen him do this time and time again. I actually, once he scored his first one, I was expecting him to score a second one. He's a guy who, time and time again, is, is, our, is our goal scorer. 
He's been he's been a great asset to that that offensive set all year long. The fact that Derek Grant was the one who who scored was significant in the fact that there was his third straight goal. He scored his uh, team leading eighth and ninth on Wednesday and then scored his team leading tenth. Which means that we will head into the dressing room after two periods of play with a one to one game, meaning we'll have a extraordinary finish once again between these two teams. I thought we played pretty well overall. I think we just wanted to keep getting pucks on net and I think that uh, their goalie played really well. Um, early on in the game, we were confident if we just uh, stuck with the game plan, it would uh, work out. Well, first off, it was excitement because the fact that we were going to get an, a really cool ending, whether it goes and ends in the third period in the final 20 minutes or it goes to overtime, we were going to have a, a fun way to end a contest. It's, it's Bakersfield versus Stockton, and being a hockey guy, I know it's Calgary versus Edmonton. And it's, it's big anytime those two teams are on the ice together, and we seem to play close games every single time we play each other. So it wasn't surprising to me that we went into it tied at one, and it wasn't surprising to me that, uh, that it was an, an all-out third period where you saw nothing but effort. I think they were confident. They came out with, uh, with a real force to be reckoned with. They were fast. They were physical. Uh, there, there are times uh, this season where I've seen our team play that way. Oliver Shillington has it there. Shillington wheels it through the circle, has the puck. The shot, he scores! Oliver Shillington, he puts it in! The Heat have the lead! It's 2-1 with 12.34 to go! I went down from my deep position there at the blue line, went down half full and received the puck. Felt that I had a Bakersfield defenseman in my back and I moved, uh, moved my body and saw a lane, went into that lane and shaked him off and uh, yeah, I got a pretty good lane there in the slot and just tried my first thought was just trying to get the puck at the net and, and I threw it there and I went five holes so it was a uh, it was a pretty good shot and uh, and I was happy to to score that goal you know if we kept our foot on the pedal uh, we had the momentum so if we just kept pressing um, we you know we thought we could get another bounce which we did and it was nice to uh, take the lead there up but not out it's stolen away by the heat thrown toward the net they score Drew Shore he just threw that one through and Scrivens didn't see that one come at him and with 9-0-1 to go the Stockton Eat have opened up this game and have a two goal lead hockey's a weird game I mean sometimes uh, I don't think the, their goalie was able to see it I think he was screened by one of their defensemen and I uh, was lucky enough to hit the net and uh, went in so it was a big goal and uh, it was Definitely uh, made the experience pretty fun. When he cut to the, the slot, the high slot, he, he recognized, because he's a smart player, that there was traffic from the Condor defense right in front of Ben Scrivens. And the goaltender didn't see it at all. I, I can tell you that right now. And, and I'll be honest, I didn't see it when it popped the net. We just wanted to make sure we got the win. Obviously, it was a home game for us, so the fans had our side. And uh, they scored a goal to make it 3-2 kind of later in the game. So, you know, until it kind of got really late, we. We had to make sure we nailed that one down for the fans. Try not to just play defense, you know, the best defense is a good offense, so we tried to get the puck in behind their D and, uh, you know, play strong behind their, in their zone and, um, you know, when, uh, when they ended up pulling their goalie, that's when you really bear down in your own zone and you're selling out blocking shots and stuff like that. Tried to ease that one to Hunt, it's up the ice, the Heat are going to win in the outdoor contest, they don't get the extra goal. In my head, I'm thinking to myself, He's got five seconds. He's got four seconds. Do you believe in Mir? No. Okay. It wasn't that kind of. A, it wasn't that kind of a uh, a game. But to me, in our own little Stockton sense, that was that was our game that we wanted to win. That was the one when you when you know that we were playing outdoors. Everyone wants to circle that game and say that's the one you got to win. And so the fact that we were able to win the team that, uh, frankly, I like beating the most. The team step to center ice and go through the old handshake line here at Rayleigh Field. It's a sign of respect. I mean, it's what it comes down to. These guys could hate each other when they're playing and they're big rivals. But the bottom line is that everybody's out there, you know, putting their backs on the line for, for each other and, and the game that they love. So it, it's something that... I like seeing. Um, I think it's it's great that they don't do it every game because I think it would get dull if we did it every game. But for a special game like that, and obviously playoff games, you see it. But uh, it, it's it's something that you know it's it's always just a sign of respect from each team. These guys work so hard for the game that they love, and uh, they you know after the game is played you know there's still some guys who may not like each other or you know may have problems with each other off the ice as well 
but uh, the bottom line is, is that they're all out there trying to fight for the same goal, which obviously in that game is a win in the first ever AHL West Coast outdoor game. One of those things we thought we played a really good game all around and uh, when Orts had to, he made the big saves that he had to make. You know, just playing outside alone was it was a cool experience, and then to win the game, it just kind of tops it off. It's, uh, it was cool that uh, the NHL Network had the uh, had the game and sent it uh, sent it nationwide. So it was uh, it was cool. Uh, Anytime you can be on the NHL Network, it's uh, um, exciting, and everyone wants to uh, play big games. And it was definitely a big game with them covering it. And I was just happy our team was able to get the win. When I look back on this outdoor game, the things that I'm going to remember most are having all of the fans up there on the concourse on Friday talking and just how loud it was with the buzz of everyone talking about the heat and Bakersfield and the rain and just how great the mood was even though it was raining. And then of course I'm going to take away from it the awesome experience of seeing the mascots interact with each other and then, you know, the Heat won, so that's one of the best parts of it. Working an outdoor game yeah, it was it was a it was a kind of a blitzkrieg of of things that we had to do and emotions and just a lot of stress that went into it and a lot of preparation, obviously. But uh, it was a lot of fun in the end, and I think looking back at it, it was it was something that I'm, I'm definitely proud to be a part of and and very happy to be a part of. I was really excited for our staff to be a part of an event like this. No matter what they do the rest of their lives, whether they continue to work in hockey or go on to work for an NHL team or whatever, they can always say they were a part of this first uh, outdoor game here on the West Coast. So that's something I wanted them to take you know, with them forever. No matter what happens, you can say you were a part of history. Our fans can say they were a part of history. I just, uh, you know, had one of those things in life that doesn't happen very often, so it was uh, one of those uh, situations where, you know, to make the most of it and glad we got the two points and it's something we'll remember uh, for a long time. It was my, it was my uh, first outdoor game, so I think I'll always remember it. And uh, I mean, playing outdoor in California is uh, it's pretty rare and it doesn't happen every day. Um, you know, the game itself is obviously something that will stand out, but the, you know, the parts in the dressing room when um, you know, guys are taking cuts in the batting cages and uh, guys are taking kind of videos and Snapchats on their phone and hanging out playing cards before the game. Um, that's the stuff you'll really remember with your teammates and, and families and stuff, so that's something that I'll really cherish. i say it's nice to score in any game, but I think just playing outside, um, kind of getting the win as a team and uh, being able to share the ice with some family and friends the day before was probably the best uh, part of the experience. Well, I've never played in an outdoor game before like that, so you know, just to do it was, it was a really cool experience and uh, for it to happen in California, like I said, uh, it just shows how far the, the game's gone and how much it's grown and um, you know, to go back to the roots of uh, playing outdoor hockey it was, uh, it was a really cool experience. What I'm going to take from it is, from the hockey standpoint, that we, we came away with a victory on a game that I wanted to win more than anything else. And, and obviously as a broadcaster you have no I impact on the game whatsoever. But I wanted to win it. Uh, that's what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to win it for our fans. I wanted to win it for, for me. But most of all, I wanted the players to win it for themselves because it was a big opportunity for them uh, to showcase some of their names in the spotlights and, and to get some publicity, uh, which, which is exactly what happened. They got their names out in the NHL network. They got their names on NHL, uh, on, on the American League website, uh, through Calgary Herald. They, they got it through just about every, every way you'd want to have the glory in the spotlight shared. They, they were able to receive that. But ultimately, the thing that I take away most from that night is how important and how, how good my team operated. At the end of the day, things go smoothly for the media, which is ultimately my biggest goal when you have a team of people that know what they're doing and have a passion for it. And, and the fact that I had uh, my, my, my friends and my colleagues and, and Richard Reyes and Dustin Cowell they're uh, helping me out, making sure that this was a special event, not just for our team, but for our fans. That's my takeaway from it, because you may never, as a fan, you may never know the amount of work that they put in and the amount of uh, heart that they showed throughout that entire week in Sacramento, but I know, and that's the thing that I'm gonna take away most, is that just like, uh, just like Coach Huska is proud of his team, uh, my team, my team to me did a, uh, uh, they did a bang up job and I, uh, I couldn't be more proud of, of the way that we as a team operated and, and 
we, we had a lot of help, not just the three of us. We had a good crew for that game, and they, they really busted their tails for, for that game to go well for the media on both nights, Friday and Saturday night. And a lot of the things on Friday were out of our control. You, you just can't control the weather. You know, ultimately, my team, my team really did a great job, and the fact that we were able to service the, the media the way we were able to, to me, it was NHL quality, and, and to them, it was NHL quality and uh, I, I couldn't thank them more. So I think that's the biggest takeaway for me is just how important it is to have a team and to have, uh, have friends there in your corner. That'll do it for me. I'm Brandon Kisker saying so long from Rayleigh Field, an outdoor game that ends in triumph for the Stockton Eat as they win 3-2. Good night, everyone.